Hello, folks out there. This episode of the podcast is partnered by Audible. Greg, you know what I love about Audible? What do you love about Audible, I John? don't have to pick up a book anymore and carry it around with me. In fact, I carry it around in my phone, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They literally keep thousands of titles right on your phone, accessible at any time, when you're driving, when you're cooking, when you're mowing the lawn, changing a diaper, doesn't matter. It's all right there at your fingertips, John. They've got podcasts, they've got lectures, they've got some like health and wellness and like fitness series on there that if you just are looking for something to fill that gap, like you're not getting into a book right now, it's all there for you, man. If you're a member, Greg, what's cool about it is you get three titles per month. The first one, you can pick whatever you want. Like I've said, I'll probably start hitting up some of those health and wellness books. And then what's awesome is they have two Audible exclusives exclusives folks you can't get it anywhere else it's true that is very true so if you guys want to get on the audible train you can go to audibletrial.com slash j-a-t-g that stands for johnny and the greg hook, hook yourself up with a 30-day free trial no promises, no nothing. If you don't like it, which I can't imagine you're not going to like it. Um, it, you can cancel at any time. But the great thing about that is the books you get during your free trial or if at any time, those books are yours. Like you get to keep them. You can listen to them nonstop, anytime, all the time. Sounds like a deal to me, man. So if you guys are smart, like I know you guys are, because you already listened to this podcast, sign yourself up, guys. What do you got to lose? It's 30 day free trial and it's books. It's knowledge. Got to drink it up. It is. So one more time, it is audibletrial.com slash J-A-T-G. Greg, this one I was super excited about. I was too. I was very happy that these guys agreed to come on. Uh, yeah. We talked to Samuel and Jed, and they are both armored combat athletes. Yes, let that sink in, folks armored combat athletes and what we mean by that is real medieval armor real medieval weapons blunt but they're real and they they play whack-a-mole yeah now. they it is it is about i mean they they've got all these different types there's point sparring there's you know knock you down kind of stuff there's last man standing and it was... there is a 60 man melee <laughs> yep that's insane Okay, so guys, I, I, I encourage you to listen to this entire podcast because I had a it was an education for me. It was a lot of fun to talk to these guys, and I was very happy. They were very open, very um, willing, and they got so willing that they want us to come and try it out. And we probably will, and it'll probably be a future podcast down the line. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I had a blast. Yeah, absolutely. So, Let's get so yeah. So without further ado. I'm really excited. This is been, it's been a while since I've been excited. Not that talking to you isn't exciting, <laughs> but we got Week guests after. back. Week. Yeah. And Greg, can you introduce us to these fine young lads? Yes. They're a little fucking crazy if you ask me, but go ahead. I think it's awesome. Um, so we got Jed and Samuel with us. Um, so I I met Jed actually on a film set. Uh <laughs> and we I don't even know how we the topic got brought up. I think we were just Facebook friends. And then I saw that uh, you're a part of an armored combat league. <clears throat> and so being a, uh, I've studied martial arts in the past. And when I say, uh, well, I think that most people in the country, definitely in the world, you say, I study martial arts and they're thinking, oh, you know, Kung Fu of some shape or form, even if it's like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, that's what they think of. But what I'm intrigued is that, uh, combat science or, or, or combat arts of all kinds. And you guys do armored combat, which is uh, Western martial arts. So you are doing axes and swords and buckler shields and like, like European knighthood kind of stuff. And yeah. I was like, Oh, I want to talk to them about this. So I sent some videos to John and he's like, yes, let's do that. So yeah, welcome definitely. boys. Yeah. Welcome. 
Thank Thanks you. for having me. So uh, I don't know if John's got, um, I'm sure he's got a list of questions, but since I got you guys, I'm going to go first. Um, <laughs> so really, what, how did you find this? How did you, I mean, everybody sees it in like films and stuff, but it that's not what we're talking about. This is not choreographed. This is, you guys are fighting. I, I, I'm assuming as if it were real and like, if if it were, you know, Six centuries ago, you'd be killing your opponent, but you're not. <laughs> so how'd you guys find this? How did you guys get into this? Jed, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, so when I was in college, I found a YouTube video, and it was kind of a documentary about Battle of the Nations, which is pretty much it's when all the national teams who do this go to one city in Europe and have a massive tournament at a castle. So you when you say national teams, you mean like there's an American team, like like this is medieval Olympics kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That is really awesome. Do you know what castle? Do you know? Um, they change it from year to year. Do you do you remember where it's gonna be this year? Um I can't remember the country, but they Jed's right, they do pick like various historical like landmarks from different countries. So they'll rotate between like Ukraine, Poland and a bunch of countries in Europe, so kind of swaps up the setting a little bit. <laughs> that sounds fucking wild. Is it during the day or night? Yeah, I think they do most of the fighting during the day, but there's there's still like torchlight fighting uh, from what I've seen in videos. I haven't actually been yet, but That's hopefully cool. someday. We'll that make is it really cool. Uh, I just checked, and this year it's Romania. Romania. Oh, cool. nice. Okay, I, that's one of my one of my bucket list items is to get over to. Romania and and check out like the castles and kind of the architecture and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. See Battle of the Nations. <laughs> okay. So when Greg when Greg sent this video to me and said, Would you like to talk to these guys? And he showed me a bunch of guys. Um, the video I, I pulled up, it was I don't know if it was necessarily you guys, but it was people in night armor, medieval garb. And I thought it was, okay, let me take you back. When I first saw something remotely close to this was at a park district once. But the weapons they were using were all, like, nerfed up. But it was, like, Oh, like hardcore. rattan. Like, yeah. It was hardcore because, like, when they would hit the guy, the guy would, like, buckle down and, like, have to defend himself. You could tell there was a lot of force behind it. So it wasn't those nerf ones that, like, you can buy at, you know, any toy store. It was, like, they... It was like wood, and then it was like, uh, like you know, surrounded by this nerf thing, and they would go at it. Yeah, I watched you guys, and I encourage anybody that's listening to us right now, Google Armored Combat League and just watch. There's a couple of videos that show up real quick, or you guys have a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a channel where I feature a lot of medieval combat, some uh, some like build videos for armor. It's called Teutonic Penguin. So. <laughs> I okay. post stuff of me and Jed uh, fighting, fought in a few different states so far, okay. and uh, yeah, there, there's some good, good so highlights. Definitely go on that. What's that again? Uh, Teutonic Penguin. Okay, we'll put that in the description below. Yeah. If you guys are watching on YouTube, we will also put it in our description <laughs> on our Instagram page and everywhere the, else we are for the promotion of this episode. Moving, what I'm trying to say is, okay, you guys don't use Nerf things. It's no. Real now, my question is the the medieval weapons you use are they sharp? No. <laughs> well, okay. I can I can see Jed's axe behind him. Oh uh, like, yeah. <laughs> for for those those of us that are on video, just over yeah, his shoulder. I just there. saw you. I just saw you do something with a sword. Can you bring out the sword? You yeah. grab something. What do you got there? Yeah, that's what you okay. use. Okay. This is what I usually use. Is that um, a falchion? Is that how you yeah. say it? Yep. And uh, just for people who don't know. A falchion is, it's basically shaped like a sword, but it's got more of the weight at one end. Mm. So it's more, more efficient at hitting through armor. Say that again. So, <laughs> Because I'm just picturing me getting this, putting this armor on, me moving. And how much does this armor weigh? How much can it weigh? Uh, 60 to 80 pounds, depending on yeah. the weight of the fight. Oh, okay. So if you're a bigger so, dude, you've got more metal to cover you. Okay, yeah. so I got this metal. I'm walking here, and I can just see myself in this scenario where I got my shield, 
And I'm starting to almost want to piss myself because I'm a I'm a, I'm thinking eventually I'm gonna get fucking <laughs> hit like I've never been hit before because we've never grown up in medieval, <clears throat> medieval times. There is no there is no time that like my first thought was how heavy is that weapon that sword you had the there? falchion yeah um maybe yeah, this one is probably like three or four yeah okay I don't know if anybody's ever swung a falchion or not. But your wrists aren't ready for that. <laughs> like if you're a, like a regular guy like me who's never picked this up. Now, I picked up play things and swung them around. But when you hit a shield or you hit armor, it like sends a vibration. Or I mean, like this. So my first, I guess my first question is, how long do you guys have to train with these? I'm losing my voice already. Like you're training with this. Like. Go through your training. Like, can somebody just put on this armor, walk out there, and, and get their ass kicked? Or yeah, you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a way to learn. It's a way to learn. It's so... yeah. Go uh, ahead, Jet. Like, like, like when you first saw this. I mean, you you saw the the video you're talking about, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do that. Like, how do you how do you start down that path, the armored combat path? Well. I, okay. So I saw that video like a year or two before I finished college, finished college, started getting a job, started getting money. And I was like, there's nothing holding me back from doing this now. <laughs> so um, I contacted a guy who was trying to get a team started. And uh, for some reason or another, he ended up uh, going to school for, I think he's doing, he's doing like EMT stuff. Mm hmm. So he ended up getting kind of busy and um but through him I met the guys who run the Chicago team. Okay. Mm. So as they were kind of moving so the guy in charge of the Chicago Chicago team his name is well it's Ray and Tyler. They're the they're the two kind of guys in charge. But um they ended they ended up kind of helping me get into this more and eventually they started to help me kind of set up a team around here from Milwaukee. <laughs> nice. The Milwaukee so, Iron Stags. They got a logo prep for us and everything. So So you there. got you guys are both Milwaukee area fellas? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um part of my question is when when you start to get into this training and I I I watched a great documentary uh I think it was called Beyond the Blade. It was one of the first Netflix documentaries I ever watched. And they talked about specific, specifically the sword and how like throughout history, the sword has gone from like this revered thing to even now. I mean, I've got a sword hanging in my house. It's one of the first things that people see when they come in. They're like, is that a sword? I'm like, yeah. They're like, is it real? I'm like fully real. I mean, I, I bought kind of like what Jed said when you're, you're out of college. You got some adult money and it was before I had kids. So I'm like, I want a sword. I want a real sword. I want a battle ready, real sword. And I went to a place, uh, you know, kind Wisconsin called curious antiquities and picked up an Asian core, uh, sword and the matching dagger that came with it. And, uh, and they hang in my house. So, but like, w w like with any kind of martial arts, I mean, you got to start, you got to start somewhere. You got to start with the basics. You got to start with the training and you guys, like John's saying, like getting your just getting your wrist in shape for just constantly swinging the wrist, the shoulder, the arm. Um, when you guys started with these teams, are you having? Is it like practice? I mean, do you, yeah. I mean, is there like oh, I'm you know three nights a week I'm at armor combat practice and things like that? Or I mean, I how wish. do you <laughs> <laughs> how do you work all that in? I mean, um. Well, so Chicago holds practices. We head there sometimes, but Weasley. I feel like with a lot of a lot of people in armored combat sports, it's going to be a lot more holding yourself accountable. Sure. Like I, I lift weights pretty often, and that's kind of what I do to get in shape. Um, but an interesting thing is we're all building off of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Like, I, like I played football for a while. There are guys who are in it who are martial artists. Uh, we got former reenactors. We've got just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I still reenact. So, I mean, swords and armor, 
it's I do that stuff all the time, just not like the caliber. Are you, are you talking? Is it more like stage combat kind of thing, or is it um, like for entertainment, or what are you? Of it, a little bit. It's still okay. like it's not like a, a staged fight, but we don't hit as hard, and you're careful of like areas like the face, especially with helmets that don't right. actually cover. Whereas in ACS, you have helmets that cover the whole face. Right. There's tons of rules on like how thick your armor has to be, the areas it needs to cover, and rigid protection like on your spine and more uh, vital areas of the body. And and I want to point out, I mean, when you're talking about, you know, the rules for safety reasons, which is totally understandable, you're doing mock warfare on each other. Yeah. Um, even though that those are there, when I first saw Jed getting involved in this, and this is all through social media, oh, um, nice. he's like, I'm going to his first fight is everything else. And, and yeah, what gets me is your field of vision is so limiting in those helmets. And then he takes, he should post a picture. He's got this giant gash <laughs> right over his eyebrow. And I'm like, uh, yeah. Happened what, three you, times? You're so, well, oh. it, it, being like Jed, a former football player, yeah, I had a face mask, but you know what? You're still getting cuts and bruises and, you know, noses bleeding and whatever, bridge of your nose cut. And I'm still <laughs> looking at it. I'm like, how did that even happen? But it does. I mean, what was it? Something cracked on the inside of your helmet, and that's what hit you, or something? Or yeah, um, yeah. So one of the times, so there, the way my helmet is set up is there's the eye holes, and then there's bars welded across the front, just so the hole is smaller. Yeah, and I'm uh, one of those cracked and bent into my head. <laughs> oh, <laughs> from an axe hit. I saw it on the video that hit. Uh, I'm pretty sure Adam threw that one. He just cranked back and swung right into the got like, slip helmet, but it, it hit the bar. <laughs> so, yeah, that was hard to watch. Okay, so all right, so when I joined CrossFit, there's like these little things in CrossFit that are just part, of, or when you join anything that is physical, there's these little parts that nobody tells you about, but it's just part of what it is. So, like for example, if you do CrossFit nine times out of ten, you're gonna rip a callus. Mm -hmm. Or nine times out of ten, when you pull up the Olympic bar, you're gonna shave your your um you're gonna shave your uh your uh, God I can't uh your, your shins. shins right yeah, yeah you're gonna shave them. Now, what is what kind of injuries are just part of this sport? Is it like a broken wrist? Is it a broken shoulder? Is it? Um, <laughs> from what I've seen so far. Depending on the terrain, you could, you know, twist an ankle. Because mm. when you got a dude who's like 300, 400 pounds pushing on you on plate, and you step wrong. We, I've, I've had a few of my friends, uh, they have to sit out because they, you know, messed up their ankle. So knee, is there no injury. weight class? No. Um, not, not really. Sometimes there is, but most events are pretty wide open. So whoever wants oh. to fight, even men and women are welcome to. Jump I was gonna in. say, are there gender classes? Because I I follow Sometimes. one uh, uh, one woman on on TikTok who's an armored combat woman. Is it Ashley? I think it is. Yeah, she's yeah she she's uh she looks tough. She's got uh, <laughs> kind of longer brown hair. No, yep. I, I I was gonna say yeah, she looks very German looking, kind of like a, like a Wisconsin woman. In armor, and that's uh, <laughs> but she she puts out great content, so it's fun to watch. Cool. Yeah, so, what's the worst injury? Mine. Sure. Uh, let's see, I I've had a couple broken fingers. I would think fingers. I would. Yeah, think that, that if you don't have the right set of gloves, yeah. your fingers are so. I mean, you're putting them out there, and you get hit with an axe or something. Yeah. Game over. Yeah. I did a screamo for a while, and that was one of our. We called it target practice, and that was, uh, you know, attack the weapon that attacks you, which is the hand, you know, because in, in uh, we we did more realistic kind of things, and we, you know, it was self defense stuff. Well, I, I you know, I take it, I take it back. Mine was like self defense. It was if, if yeah, no. you know, keep uh, keeping a, a screaming stick or something similar to in your car, and he's like, oh yeah, if someone's got a knife, whack him on the hand, and you pretty much shatter all their fingers. But anyway, so it makes so sense. Jed, so Jed yeah. what did what what injury did you get? Like your worst? Um, so far it's just been a little bloodied on the head and uh, some bruises because I got gapped a couple times. What's Sorry. gapped? So gap is um, so the armor can only cover so much, 
but occasionally yeah. when someone swings a weapon at you, they'll miss the armor and hit. Oh, sure. The hip. The hip is really bad yep. because that's like a joint. And a lot of the time, maybe the, the brig, the chest armor doesn't cover all the way down past your hip and connect with the leg armor. So you got like a gap that big. And as you swing, like the bend of the body is guiding that down and nail that. Catches you. Yep. yep. That's a pretty common uh, like first first time. People take a pick of that big purple bruise left after that. <laughs> oh wow! So what's recovery like? Like can it like are your leagues like on the weekend and then it's just? Uh, they're more tournament based. They're more what? They're more like tournament based. So okay. like, someone will get a tournament together and they'll have like, they'll have like medals for teams. So, How do you get on the national team? You got to qualify. Yeah. And that's just what going, going through the gauntlet of whoever else wants to be on there. And you just, so take me to a match. Okay. <clears throat> so it's just, let's say, is, is it two on two? Is it five on five? How does it, any of those? It can. Right. Okay. Are there only specialists that only like are only good at five on five or two on two or. There are a lot of people who do just duels or. Okay. So I'll break it down into three basic types. Right. Duels pro fights, and melees. Okay. So duels, it's all, it's 1v1, um, points are scored with weapon hits. That's what I like. Mm -hmm. Pro fights are 1v1, but they function and are scored more like an MMA match. So okay. you can attack while they're on the ground, uh, do that kind of stuff also. Ooh. it's You can get points by punches and kicks. Those are brutal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw a bunch of those videos. So what's the other one? The last one? Melees. These are like 3v3, 5v5, 10v10, pretty much all Ooh, the way up to... Just I think they fucking free-for-all. 32 v 32. The, oh, I'm sorry, where was I? It goes 32, 32 versus 32? I think there's been 60 versus 60s at Battle of the Nations. Like, wow. at, where do you put all those people? Where do you put them all in one... Area. <clears throat> Stuff them in there and turn around and let them go. <laughs> Have you guys ever been involved in anything like that? Like, Not no. on that scale. Not yet. The largest battle I fought, and it wasn't ACS, uh, I do Viking reenactment. So we've had oh, 100 nice. guys out on the field. Not at the caliber of ACS, but this the scale is spectacular. You have 50 shields lined up, and then you charge at each other. Oh, shield <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Please, please send me an email of, the of when ones. those are coming up because I want to see all this. Yeah, the Viking ones. Greg and I are Viking fans. We love like the history of Vikings, yeah. and the mythology, and all that fun stuff. Uh, we're big fans of that. So that's interesting. Um, okay, so there's dual, pro, and melee. Yes. And sometimes they can get up to sixty people per side. Yeah. And that that's I'm guessing the 60 on 60 is like an outdoor event. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Cause I've seen uh, some of the videos I've watched. They're in like, they're in like a big arena and yep. they've got almost like, um, oh, they look almost like cattle fencing or staging around. And that's how they're setting up the arenas. And it's like, just go at it. Now I do. Uh, if anybody is kind of familiar with this, I imagine there were, two shows that I saw and they're older shows and they're not on anywhere. One was, I think it was called full metal jousting where <laughs> it was yeah. more like jousting. And then they tried to throw in like a reality TV kind of piece to it. Um, but it was team based, but then later on, and I don't know what channel was on, but it was another one where it was armored combat and night they fight. started night. Yes, yes. That's what it was. Night. One of those we things that I, guys in there. Well, I'm like, look at him like this, has to be a smaller community of, of, of fighters that will probably know each other. Yeah. And, but two things that really hit me, I'm like, how did in, in the actual warfare, what got me is like, how did anybody get killed doing this being like so armored up? I, I could actually answer that. Um, okay. Go for it. It's, it's Do different than the sport where it's more athleticism and you're hitting the guy as hard as you can because it's entertaining. It looks yeah. brutal. It's really cool to watch. Back then, the, uh, the weapons were designed to get past armor 
but right. not by piercing through it or smashing through it typically so with like a sword you would have a, like a long sword where you could have have your hand on the blade with right. a technique to grab it and you would push it into armpits mm -hmm. uh, joints the elbow under the neck into the helmet it it was uh awful <laughs> the so, oh, did you guys see see the film uh the king on netflix it's all know. about all about Henry V, and they did a they reenacted the Battle of Agincourt, but it was very realistic in in what you're talking about. It wasn't, you know, it was it was a lot of pickaxes. It was it was a lot of war hammers. Yep. Um, yep. Pole arms were huge, and then yeah, it was like you got a guy down on the ground in the mud, and you're rolling around, and you're just trying to put a dagger like underneath and looking for those. Those squishy bits. Yeah, that is more realistic than the uh, the ACS fighting, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, we can't do that for a <laughs> of others. So, yeah, also, well, we, what I liked about oh, sorry, go ahead, Jed. There's also like a list of weapons that uh, we're not supposed to use for that very reason. Like you yeah. can't use those. What you use? What? Say that again. You're kind of a little bit. Oh, sorry. So there's like a list of things that uh, we're not supposed to use, even though they're historical. Like hammers were often used for anti-armor, and we can't do that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes um, sense. But Wales is another watching, one. Oh, sure. The ball and chain. Uh-huh. Yeah, those are, oh my gosh. Those are brutal. Um, yep. The the other thing I noticed when while watching the Night Fight show is that kind of what, I can't imagine. I mean, I would put, uh, John, you knew me in my twenties when I was actually doing a lot of working out. Jed's bigger than that. So, um, putting Jed in another 60 pounds of armor and have him come barreling across an arena. Cause that's what I saw on night fight was like these huge guys just coming up and just wham, just, you get hit in the back of the head <laughs> with a shield or something. And you're like, yeah, that's gotta hurt. Just impact, just pure impact. Jed, how big are you? Uh, I'm about two fifty pounds. I'm six one. Oh, so you're like a tall bowling ball, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is so? Is that like your fighting style? Are you very much like uh, I'm just gonna like come at you like the Hulk and we'll go see through you, kind of thing? Yeah, that kind of has to do with what I was talking about earlier, where people have different backgrounds, so I tend to rely more on things I learned in football to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've Sam, before. <laughs> Sam, Sam, you seem like, um, I'm going to go to my Game of Thrones Rolodex here, you seem like the Viper, like the that Viper. type of fighting style. Yeah, I Is mean... Is that more I'm, you, or...? I'm, I'm, I'm a little on the lighter side. I'm 210, 6 foot 4, so... I'm not the burliest fighter, but I, I do a lot of the sword play. I'm good with manipulating blades and, and getting shots in hard and fast. So I don't have the pushing power that Jed's got. <laughs> we figured this out in the ring. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I've worn armor for a long time. Uh, I've, been, I've been, like, messing around with armor for, like, eight years now. As a kid, I would make the, the chain mail armor, and I'd... I'd buy the extra pieces just to put on more mm -hmm. and more weight, and I'd run around with it. And uh, I started a group called Knights of the North, so I'm, I'm used to fighting the armor. So it gives me a little bit of a, a leg up, but uh, yeah, it definitely helps to have that extra weight to to get the advantage of pushing your opponent back because that's a huge part of the sport. So yeah, so I I know what sparring was like with. <clears throat> I mean, I was just in. It was martial. It was you know taekwondo sparring where you know you were worried about the weight of your gloves. Are we going to go for sixteen or whatever? And if you had a three minute round, you were exhausted. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine the cardio work you guys got to do just to wear all that armor and then have to fight in it. So how long are the matches? I mean, are there um, are there time limits and your rest is like a round or yeah. Duels, it's minute rounds usually. Okay. Um, pro fights are uh, three minutes. And total uh, or per round? Per round. Oh my gosh. So, like, a victor is decided with uh, two consecutive wins. So, it's like okay. best out of three. So, you can fight up to three minutes, and that doesn't sound like a lot, 
But if you sign up for more than one uh, weapon set, I, oh, like, sure. I, I went to uh, <coughs> went to Kentucky and we fought. I regret signing up for everything because by the end of it, I was I was wrecked. <laughs> yeah, I bet. What is yep. your when you're resting in between not in between rounds but when i'm guessing like if you win that you move on to another one right yep. so yep. what's your kind of like your recharge meal like what would that be you try to eat pretty light at events if you're like oh, really? loaded down with a bunch of like heavy foods you're not going to be able to fight as well so granola bars oranges something with a lot of uh, like uh water water content in it okay. but not you don't like just slam a ton of water because then you'll you'll start to get a little bit sluggish yeah what about you jed is it mead you just drink some mead? <laughs> just, uh no nah, it's it's a lot of fruit i i also kind of like to keep it light because uh like i've seen when people throw up in their helmet and so <laughs> God, i didn't even think about that yeah that makes sense <laughs> oh that that okay. can happen from helmet horror as well. That's where you, your CO two starts like cycling back because you're hyperventilating and oh. you're just, you're panicking because yeah. you get claustrophobic. And then you can throw up from that as well. That's not not good. Oh, I, I didn't even think about. <laughs> I didn't even think about that either. The yeah. O two piece. So I, so you reached on something, Sam, that I want to go back to. I, I okay for Sam and then Jed. Like, how did you get involved in this? It, Sam, it sounds like since day one, you've always loved medieval knights and, you know. Yeah, I mean, I played too many video games as a kid. Age of Empires 2, Legend of Zelda, swords, armor. and No such thing as too many video games. Yeah, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I always just, I, I wanted to, to swing around a sword and shield. And, and eventually, you know, I, I, like I said, I made the, the chainmail armor. And kind of like messed around with just different pieces. I didn't know what was right, but I, I know what looked cool until I uh, I started seeing kind of like Jed did. I saw some videos from Poland of, of the uh, Armored Combat League there, and those mm-hmm. guys are crazy. Like they they are nuts. And you look at their gear; their helmets are all dented in. It's like whoa, how do you do that? So I mean, I didn't get into it until like was a year and a half ago about the same time as jed where i got involved with the chicago team met tyler and ray who lead that team and and they invited me out to a local practice and it was awesome just totally a whole nother level so So i I guys have yeah i'm sorry sorry i'm sorry i was just gonna say i got like kit together for it because the armor that i had before it was it was not the right materials too heavy didn't allow the right mobility because you want uh, as light as possible, yet sturdy. So mm-hmm. made out of tempered steels, so you can you can save on the weight, but not lose any strength. And then uh, you want good mobility, so you don't have like a lot of armor with stuff sticking off of it. You want mm-hmm. to be able to move. You want to be able to fight effectively. So yeah, I I got a bunch of armor. We we buy a lot of stuff off Facebook. Oddly enough, there's used armor pages. You can put together a whole suit of armor for the sport for like fifteen hundred bucks, easy. Huh. Well, that's gonna. I was gonna ask: Is do you guys have like a forge somewhere? Is there like a home forge that you would go to? But you're saying just you can just pick it up on Facebook and kind of piecemeal it together. Yeah, you can. Some guys who are lucky will have a forge and they can make their own gear. I mm-hmm. wish I had that. Probably in the future, I'd like to invest in some some time. But if you don't get the tempering right. You can risk right. having your armor fail, which is not not good. So, well, I just think about the time it takes to forge anything. Yeah, would I, be that would take away. <laughs> I don't know how you could do both. How how you could keep up with the practice and tournaments and competing if you're spending so much time in the, yeah while working full time and having like a a 21st century life as well. Yeah, uh, I don't know how you could do that, but uh, it's hard. <laughs> Jed, how did you get into it? Um, so like it, I met this kind of guys, uh, I lucked out and there's a company that was overseas that was selling a set of used armor. And then I checked the measurements for it and I'm like, this fits perfectly. <laughs> so I managed to, I managed to just order a kit from them. And, uh, that was after I'd met Ray and everything, Ray and Tyler. And, uh, I kind of got a team together from there. 
Right, but I, I'm sorry. I guess what I was asking was when when you were a kid, there had to be something. Was this just replacing? Was this yeah. just replacing like football for you, or? Um, in some ways, yeah. Uh, I've always been a big history fan. Okay. Um, it's something that my whole family kind of shares. So I was always interested in medieval history. Uh, was a big fan of like historical movies, and. Uh, after college, I was like, well, I don't know what I want to do right now. And so this was just something that I saw that one time and was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay, cool. So what do you guys get out of it in terms of like what, what, like, I'm sure it sounds like Sam, it sounds like you get such an adrenaline rush off this that there's <laughs> nothing else like it. Is yeah. That same thing. I'm assuming. Yeah. And, uh, for me, it's almost like. Okay, so it's impossible to relive history, usually. Yeah. This gives me an opportunity to do that, and not a lot of people get an opportunity in that way. That makes sense. It's yeah. like, yeah. It's, as it's safe as you can get. <laughs> and it's also like striving to be a knight when nowadays that doesn't mean the same thing as it did mm -hmm. back then. Right, yeah. So do you guys have families, like girlfriends, <laughs> Wives are like, you bought how much for armor? Like my, my girlfriend is sitting right here and she is, is laughing she? right now. <laughs> is she? So what's that like? What's that like? Because I look, I look, I'll tell you this right now. I went out and I got both Thor's hammers from the MCU. Like I got um Stormbreaker <laughs> and I got Molnir, and my wife and I had a a uh, pretty good discussion about it. So Ooh. I can't imagine I can't imagine you coming home and saying, hey, yeah, sorry I'm late. I had to buy this new helmet that, you know, could reinforce the axe that, you know, Jed hit me with the other day or, or whatever. Like, so, so kind of, I'm sorry, Jed, Jed, yeah. I keep messing yeah, up. I'm a, I'm a bachelor. I can do whatever I want. Okay. <laughs> it's so, kind of like a meme for me at this point. Yeah. Like, I have a problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, see, like, Jed, what he gets out of the sport is the adrenaline and, and reliving history. I just like, I, I like that too. I like also the gear because the gear is all different. It feels oh, different. Cool. You get to experiment. You get to like build things, modify stuff, especially the helmets because they all have like their own kind of style. It's like, oh, I like that one. Ooh, that one's really cool. So over time, I, I amass a huge collection. And yeah, my girlfriend, Hannah, she... She's like, are you, are, do you think you have a, a little too much armor there? <laughs> and, and it's so it'll get to the point where I have to, like, justify everything. Like, oh, this is the last helmet. Uh, oh, okay, this one's really cool. I know I said I was going to buy another one. But, I mean, like, oh, it was a good deal. Or I just, it would really be cool to have that one. And the last one, I'll, I'll sell a couple of them. It doesn't happen. No. <laughs> hey, hey, Hannah, because I know you're listening. It's not heroin. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I, I'm right there with you. I'm a nerd too. Uh, I've had conversations coming home from Comic Cons where I'm like, I bought some lightsabers. And my wife goes, What? And I'm like, No, it was a good deal. The guy was just trying to clearance them out. And she's like, I don't care. So yeah, I've got I've got a house full of stuff that uh, I've had those conversations. I'm probably pretty lucky that I didn't know about armored combat in my 20s because I would imagine I, so. I think I would have been right there. And, well, you could and be right here, right now. I could, I could. Now I just think I'm too damn old. But um, God, I've so. seen it. But I've seen guys like what doing the what John said. There was a for a couple of years they had a small medieval fair in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, and they had uh, oh, that one. It was I think they they were more they had some reenactors because they had jousters there with like old school like war horses. These things were just freaking huge. Uh, but they also had some guys there who were from the Madison area. Oh, I know those guys. Yeah, doing what John was talking about. Well, they had the, it, it's it's like a rattan sword used in like Western martial arts. Uh, yeah. And then they put like a foam, like almost like a pool noodle over it and then just tape the hell out of it. Uh, oh. And those guys, mostly leather armor. But I saw Never a guy. Mind. I don't know those guys. Those guys, the guys in leather armor were just, I mean, same thing. Like there, there were a lot more uh, bends and it didn't protect as well. So when you're getting just whapped with 
essentially in a screen of stick that's got some tape on it. It was just leaving giant welts. Mm. One guy was fighting with like a full on barbarian, like bear like thing on. And they, I thought at first they were doing like point sparring and it wasn't points. It was just until you give up kind of sparring. Like you get hit enough and the guy goes, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> like, so, so what are the rules here? How do, how do we figure out like, cause I saw some videos where, a, where guys were taking knees while other people were fighting. What well, is that's, that's SCA, isn't it? Like still oh. fighting on the knees or no, 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 no. Like once they got hit, they like, kind of like i guess play dead they're or dead yeah, oh they that isn't that more dead. like role playing like a live action role play kind of deal no 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 okay <laughs> it's in was it like in melees where it was multiple like yes five, yes yeah. it was melees yes so mm-hmm. in melees um the winner the winning team is determined by basically the last person the last team to still have guys standing up yep so and you're qualified as down when you make three points of contact with the ground uh-huh. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to ask you. So if you get knocked how, over, you're done. Yeah. Yes. How hard is it? Yes. How hard is it to to stay up? I guess when you're throwing all this momentum and you have 60 pounds behind you and you miss or it doesn't go the right way and you start falling, like all that momentum starts taking you forward. Um, it's. I mean, it doesn't happen. We, it's it's not like you throw your whole body and you use most of like hip rotation, shoulder movement, and wrist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you if you miss a hit, swing through, you, you're pretty like it happens sometimes. So it's not like it's catches you off guard and you're, you're totally. That's out just of part of the. That's just part of the deal. You just yeah, fall. It can happen. Well, no, you don't. You don't have to fall. I mean, you usually can recover from that pretty easily. Oh, okay. Unless, unless you're like maybe what you're thinking is like when you're running at a guy and, you, and you're like and he steps out of the way yeah then you're going down <laughs> yeah. there's a documentary i was going to watch it was called harlem's night fight or something like that um yeah it's it's a it's a film that documented this what you guys do and he separated his shoulder in practice because he was backtracking and he like he i don't know he couldn't figure out his weight or something or maybe he was just exhausted and he fell and all that collapsed and it separated his shoulder. So I was just wondering if you guys are knocking each other out and the way like you are dead is if you fall down three times. How many times is it like friendly fire that you fall down? It's, it's a, like three points of contact two, on the two ground. Two knees and a hand? Yes. Or, oh, or like you, you okay. Put I'm your just hand down, you're out. Like oh, you're okay, standing, okay. you have your hand on the ground. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. I suppose your feet are on the ground then too. Mm-hmm. Um. I was going to, so in setting up a fight, do you get to like study your opponent? Do you get, I mean, are you watching game film kind of thing or is it just going in? Do you get to know their weapon set? So like if you're thinking sword and shield versus taking in an ax versus taking in something else, I mean, how does, or do you just go, this is, this is what I'm good with. This is what I'm going to try to do. Depending. Oh, do you want to talk about it, Jed? Um, I mean, if you got something to say, you can say. Well, it. <laughs> you, you can you can follow up. Uh, I'll speak for duels. If you want to speak for melees? Okay. For 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 duels, when you sign up, you're signing up for like long sword, so you know what to expect. You're signing mm-hmm. up sword and shield, sword and buckler, so you have an idea of what they're gonna use or like how they might fight. Unfortunately, each fighter has their own intricacies, their own tricks, and a lot of the time especially fighting new people who are better than me. I have to figure out what they're doing on the fly. doesn't always pan out. I, I lose a lot. I, I win some. But uh, mm-hmm. like you can learn from fighting guys just, just one or two bouts because, yeah, you, you don't always know what they're going to do. Everybody's different. So, But generally, the weapons are similar. Okay. Similar. So when I think of like a UFC kind of fight where – they sign up I, and I don't know if this happens in armored combat where they like, you know, you've got this guy versus this guy and they're training for that fight. Like if you yeah. know someone's a striker versus a grappler, you're watching films of them. You're trying to learn their tells that d- can't happen so much here. Right. It's just like you're signing up and you're drawing lots and have at it. Depending on how big the team is, like if there's videos of fighters, we, we've had uh, team captains tell us, 
hey, here's this video of the people we're going to face. Watch it. You know, see what they study it. They yeah. like to do. Yeah, study it. So um, for melees, it's a little different. I don't know, Jed, if you want to talk about weapons and melees. Well, with weapons and melees, um, it's you really need to think about it more of like team tactics. So you'll have guys in the front, and they'll be like sword and shield, and they'll be protecting like the guys with the big two-handed weapons. Okay. With with like falchion and shield. Uh, you're probably not going to get as many takedowns with strikes, so you'd be more focused on grappling and opening up those hits from the guys with the big two-handed axes. Is is it legal to like? I, can you trip a guy? Can you start to th- yeah, oh like, yeah, like yeah. throwing some judo kind of stuff? I mean, yep. So it's all fair game because that's was even when um, when I was studying like pure hand-to-hand close combat kind of stuff. I'm like, man, I wish I would have known this when I was a defensive lineman because <laughs> there, there's so much pulling and pulling and, you know, you bend a guy at the hip and he moves. I mean, that's pretty typical football kind of stuff, but I can imagine the same kind of things apply, especially if you can get their center of gravity off by just a little. Mm-hmm. Anybody with any kind of judo knowledge is going to be like, and you're down. <laughs> yeah. It does help. So, is there any like cool nicknames like the Black Knight or anything like that, or is there like yeah, Jed cool the Destroyer? Like, I mean, not for us yet, but uh, yet. we're pretty there. fresh, pretty new to the sport. Oh, are you guys pretty new? Um, uh, what like a year and a half? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I it's thought been... you guys have been like in this for like at least you know seven years or oh. something, but you guys are rookies. Yeah, technically That's rookies. Fine. Yeah. Well, you guys, bad, you guys are talking point. like you like you've been in it for a long time. We do invest a lot of time into it within that year. I mean, if you train really hard, you can get incredible if within a year or two. So, what's training look like, Sam? Sam um, sorry. Before <laughs> before we go into like a fight at a practice, we'll do yeah. uh, circuit cir- circuit drills. So we'll have a, a big loop of like calisthenics, weightlifting. You gotta. You do the rope thing or pick up a really mm-hmm. heavy bag and throw it. And you wear yourself out before you even put on the armor so we don't really hurt each other. Because you want to save that for the turn. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and and then at home, I, I have a punching bag that's all taped up and shredded because I'll go out for an hour, put on some gear, and, and just hit it. Repeat. Mm-hmm. So, Wait, all right, all right, Sam. Time right. out. You go yeah. out in the backyard. Yeah. And you put on armor and you're wailing so yep. what is Hannah and your neighbors doing at that moment when you're just out there, like, destroying something in the backyard? Like, Hannah's... have cops been called to your house or anything? <laughs> no, no, not yet. Where Hannah's do you live? used to it because, I mean, since we started dating, she was aware of the night. She knew that coming in, right? Yep. The neighbors, <laughs> uh, there's been talk. There's been talk, like <laughs> rumors throughout the neighborhood. Hey, there's this guy, he, like dresses up and, and he's like in the backyard. I don't know what he's doing. He's like a sword or something. It's weird. Do you know anything about that? I don't know. Never heard of it. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They don't know it's you? Um, I mean, I got the helmet on, so they, they, they know that there's somebody there. They don't know who it is. Oh. But. <laughs> I'm just thinking it's of awesome. the, so much fun I could have with that. Oh, I, I'm kind of there with Samuel being the, being the weird guy in the neighborhood. Right. I think it's great, and I you, embrace the hell out of it. You're the weird guy in the neighborhood. Absolutely, I are am. you really? Yeah. Well, it's funny. Like when we first moved into our neighborhood, and I'm I was like hanging up my swords and whatnot, and um, you know, people coming over the house and they see I've got a scream of sticks at every entrance to the home for easy access. He's a little and bit were, like the white shrewd guys. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, so. <laughs> So they were like, huh. And they'd ask about it. And they all, I've got a, a museum style replica of Mjolnir, uh, even before Thor came out. So they were like, is that, is that Thor's? Like, yes, it is. Um, and they were like, they're like, kind of thought it was weird. The only time they ever questioned me on a weapon is somehow my son let it out that I have a handgun. And so oh. my, you know, and the, you know, I've got, I'm trained. I got concealed carry, everything else. And, um, that's my one neighbor was up to me and like, uh, so we heard you have a gun in the house. I said, yes, I do. Where that's, is it? That's said, very none of, like none of your business. Yeah. Um, where is I, it? Actually, I told him, I said, I, I actually put it under my son's pillow just at night. So I could, 
<laughs> they were like, and they didn't find the humor in that. Um, but I'm like, you know, I said, if you're worried about like kids coming over to my house and like, a, it's not on the open. You don't have to worry about that. But they're more interested in the medieval weaponry I've got hanging over the house. I'm like, can I touch that? No, you can't. <laughs> Usually at events, we'll we'll try to get people to come over and like, here, hold this sword, try this helmet on, you're gonna love it. And then we we rope people in like that. And that's that's what I remember even being younger and going to like the Renaissance Fair in Bristol. I mean, it is an educational opportunity to Taste be able. And you're, oh yeah, six well, years. I mean, and just getting in there, and and you're watching the you know the fighting there, and you're like. That's not real. That's choreographed or, or whatever it is. Um, yeah. But but then just being able to talk to some of these guys that are still in the full plate armor or going down to the one corner where they're like, hey, we're going to put a balloon on top of your head. and You're going to do fencing for a little bit. And I'm like, all right, fine. I'm into it. Um, <laughs> but that's that's cool. I mean, like, like Jen was talking about just being able to relive history and keep that alive, um, you know, keep the reverence to some of the things that, uh, you know, knighthood or what we thought knighthood was and being able to say, you know, it's not just, you know, lordship, blah, 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 blah. It's, you know, here's, here's this thing and here's why it's dangerous, but here's why it's, it's respected. I think it's cool. Hey, Jed. Yeah. Can I see your axe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, going to have to take him out to dinner first. <laughs> <laughs> What's his shirt say? But hurt is love, or uh, it's bow hurt. That's the the word for for our sport. It means uh, wallop in French. Oh. Really, I think that or... was one of the leagues I was watching. Was the bow hurt? Okay, so what are we looking at here, Jed? Like, walk us through this. Was that a new one? This is a new one. This is my new oh, one. Yeah, yeah. nice. A, a seven pound axe from Bohert Tech. Okay. On their website, it's labeled as Heavy Monday because it's the <laughs> heaviest one that's legal for the sport. Oh, boy. So seven seven pounds is a heavy weapon? That's pretty heavy. Yeah? Yeah. If you're Maybe. swinging that around for a while. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, Ooh, that, that is pretty good. And you're 6'1". Okay, so that's a that's a pretty big axe. So you get a lot of... Uh... Okay, Jed, do you like to do, like, just duels or melees or... I'm a melee guy. You're a melee guy. So I do, I do some long sword duels, but like I prefer melees. Okay. So do you guys get into this a little bit in terms of like, you start, you starting to think that you're actually knights. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you find, you find yourself saying like, I am mighty. No, <laughs> no nothing like that. Dude, whatever. You say that every morning when you get up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I just get out of bed and I'm a knight. No, I'm saying play. Johnny says that every morning. When oh, he gets up. this guy. He, he, he <laughs> Superman poses in front of the mirror and goes, I am mighty. That's Greg's stand up. <laughs> nope. Go ahead, though. So like what I'm saying, like, because dude, right now, Jed, you look like you would be from that time period. And I'm just like <laughs> when. Greg and I during the quarantine were growing beards. I was for some reason looking through a ton of Viking stuff. <laughs> and I just was. It's like the beard was talking through me. And I'm just curious if that's something that you kind of find yourself carrying yourself a little bit differently because of that. Well, okay. So this is a thing I haven't talked about too much, but in theory, I am getting knighted in a few months. Whoa. How's that work? What are you talking about? How does that work? Um, so this is a thing I've barely talked about with people, so this is... It's an organization called SMOTJ. Okay. But I met some some people who are knights in it, and it's a charitable organization that's about, like, protecting Christians who are currently living in the Holy Land. Okay. Oh, sure. So, like, okay, I'm gonna just... Some people get the wrong impression when I say this, but they are, like, Templars. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, that, so you're going to be a Templar Knight type of thing? Kind of, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Hey, look, dude, we're not, we don't think you're weird. Or I just, I think you guys are fascinating, actually. That's yeah. why I'm asking these, like, questions like, how do you feel when you wake up? And, like, oh, and that's another question I actually have. When you get done with a match and you wake up the next day, is it like a car wreck? Like, are yeah. you like, <laughs> oh, my God. So, yep. uh, 
after after the last tournament I was in, like I had two friends with me, so we drove to get some Mexican food. Oh and then, no! No, the Mexican food was fine, but as we were, <laughs> we were driving back to the hotel, I'm like, shut the radio off, and then I like closed my eyes and would not open them till the lights were off in the hotel room because my head was killing me. Wow! Oh wow! He- okay, so that's a good question. Like. Who's been in the lot like the people that have been in the sport for a long time? Is there any type of you know brain damage or long term effects physically? Joint, or? joint issues is pretty common. I mean, you're putting all that weight on your joints, you're mm-hmm. pushing your body and fighting all the time. Uh, that that can definitely I know some guys who have complained about fighting joint issues and say, Yeah, it's getting harder to do it. I don't know how long you keep going for and concussions are always a, a concern. That was gonna is, be my, my question. What about like concussion protocols or anything like that? I mean, is that you know, the NFL, anybody gets even touched in the head, they stop the game for fifteen oh, minutes. No. I mean, we you guys stop the game after somebody gets hit in the head. If they don't yeah. get up, then we'll yeah. pull them to the side, get the, the first aid and you know, check them over. But you, you wanna well, you don't want to aim for the head because the helmet is actually the strongest part of a suit of armor, but it, people do. So headshots are like full, fair, and legal. I mean, oh, I, yeah. it's yeah. the neck. You cannot hit the neck on the sides or especially the back. Thank so, God. Yeah. So when I'm thinking like, I don't know if this makes sense, but if Jed's coming down on a one angle, which is literally like right here, I mean, that's. I mean, and, and on a, what was that? Probably a five foot handle on that, at least. I mean, you're, that's a lot of force that you can generate, even though it's blunted. I'm, uh, I'm going to send you a video after this because at the end of last tournament, I actually got knocked out because of something like that. That was going to be one of my questions. You guys been knocked cold at all? Yep. No you way. Look, you look fucking happy that you're saying that. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I can I can relate. I can relate because be, having done some combat sports like and we we're talking about the pain and like, you know, having your helmet, you know, break and drive into your eye or I mean, all that kind of stuff. But it's all fun. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a rush. I, I have taken some major shots for my instructor and he was always good at hitting the floating rib. Ooh. And have you ever been hit right there where it just kind yeah. of bends you over and then it just blossoms through like from your spine to your gut you're like oh my god and you're still fighting <laughs> and yep. then afterwards you're like that was fun it hurt a lot but that was fun <laughs> and john's got this look on his face like why would you do that yeah i yeah, no, I, I don't <laughs> look i'm all about aggression i played football too i i love competing but there's a certain point where like jed honestly i'd be scared if i couldn't open my eyes after i took some serious head trauma like that would have worried me. That would have worried me. But how like, old are you? It just hurt a lot. <laughs> how old are you? Uh, twenty four. How old are you, Sam? Twenty three. Oh, you puppies! You guys. Can <laughs> yes, you guys <laughs> are, are you? puppies, dude. When you're forty, when you're forty five, you start questioning, like, why would I do that? Why would I want to go that way? But when you're twenty, you're like, fuck yeah, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. So I get it now. I totally get it now. I totally Sammy's get it. Like- Sam was like, come back out. I'm like, I'm 42. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about that anymore. Yeah. Like I was thinking like if, all right, if I'm 23, I'd be like, yes, strap me up some armor. Give me the biggest fucking sword you got and get out of my way. I want to see if I can take this guy on. Now I'd be like, wait, you want me to move in this? And you want me to hold on to this with one hand? Are you nuts? You know? All that being said, when John and I make it out to a match, I'm going to be like, hey, Jed, can I? Can I see your shield and your sword? And I'm gonna be out there. And be like, I want to. I want to. I want to hit something. I want to. I want to hit something. Gear you up. I just out. actually. I actually want to try on the armor. To yeah. See if I can move in that thing. We can arrange it. Cool. Yeah. Let's do that. That'd be fun. I. I, I do definitely want to come out and watch you guys. Uh, well, yeah. That, that brings up a point. Like, do you guys have? Is there a season? Is it just whenever fights get set up or matches get set up or like we're heading into summer, which I can imagine is maybe a more opportune time to for this kind of sport yeah you, you're about uh, on it there you, you got it right we'll, we'll fight whenever there's events but summer there's a lot more opportunity to fight mm-hmm. outdoors you know, imagine slipping on snow and fighting in armor oh i don't want to yep. do that <laughs> like, oh oh yeah <clears throat> i didn't even think about snow yeah yeah what happens if you you know, get stick your tongue to your helmet. 
<laughs> you do you do uh, start to freeze the yeah. metal with your breath, and uh, if you if you stick your nose your tongue to it, it'll it'll start to freeze to the, your helmet because there's all that condensation and sweat that's just building up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Jed, Jed's beard is just gonna be one big icicle. Like that. <laughs> Okay, so for someone that's that that wants to get into this, someone that's listening to this right now, I'm like, yes, this is what I've always wanted to do. What's their first step? Uh, local group. Yep. There's what, a, what was that? And how do they find the local group? So there's so, a page. Oh, you want to go take it away, Jed? There is um, the Armored Combat Sports website has a uh, it's got a page called Night Finder where it's just a list of all the local groups and how you can find a team from there. Okay. And how much does an I guess a a freshman armor set take you? Sam, uh, how much does it, how much does it cost? Yeah, like okay, let's say like there's a 20-year-old out there and yep. I and I emphasize young people <laughs> <laughs> um who who want to go through this or want to experience it. And to be honest, I think like Greg hit on it a little bit. Like, I think we'd like to experience it, but it's like, I think if I got hit once, I'd be like, good, I'm done. That was fun. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> um, but for someone that wants to start this up, like what kind of, like, I, I'm guessing a guy just can't walk up to the league and all of a sudden he gets this sword and he goes, he has to yeah. invest in his oh, own. Yeah, You can, but no shit. Mm hmm. Well, so if Greg and I were to come up, like I could fight you, Samuel, with no experience or nothing. Yes. Oh, I should. I want to do that then. Actually. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm not talking trash. I know I'm going to get my ass handed to me, but there's something about experiencing something, especially when like, because look, you're not the only guy out there, and you know that that has like I used to be like when I was in first grade, my mother got called to the teachers. Because they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I said I wanted to be Conan. <laughs> okay, so I've had that dream too. But I just the idea of what 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 would it really feel like to be in armor and try to defend yourself? You know, because the movies they make it look easy sometimes. You know, they make it look way more cumbersome than it has to be. I I think, especially oh, really? if you're doing it like. That's what people don't understand. Like the armor, it's not a ton of bricks. It's it's spitted to your body. It's suspended off of like the padded, the gambeson that you wear, the jacket. So it's not just a ton of weight. It's evenly distributed. So when you move, yeah. When you get like moving, you don't really notice that extra weight as much. Oh really? Mm -hmm. well, I think it's the a little bit of what Hollywood has told us, but also the lack of education on. I mean. Think back to when you're in middle school and it's like sixth grade and you're doing European history and they're like, and these are knights. Yeah. Moving on. Um, <laughs> and they would yeah. show like the guy in a joust who had to be like in a winch to get like hoisted onto his heart. And so everybody thinks armor just weighs an absolute ton. Yeah, but so it, it did weigh more, but yeah. it wasn't. It still wasn't that much. It wouldn't go over 100 pounds. Right. But, and, and that's just the idea of like. People just don't know. And that's why, yeah. I, like I said, I appreciate the Ren Fair as much. I actually talking to people that do what you guys do because you can learn so much more. That's that's when I first heard about how um, how like a sword in general, like a, a, if you're on, charging on horseback, a, a sword is not what was in your hand. You probably had a mace or a ball and chain or something like that as Lance, opposed to. Spear. Yeah. As opposed to like, they're like, imagine you're riding full gallop on a horse, which I've done too, and you swing into something and your sword catches bone. Well, then your your sword's flying out of your hand because you know you're probably not going to completely slice through the guy. And but what'd you uh, say, Judd? And that's the thing. It, it's not even just with horses. Historically, swords were more of a sidearm than anything. Mm -hmm. So if you were a knight on foot, you'd be using like a pole axe or something. Oh really? Swords were yeah. expensive, very expensive. They or, were they were symbols. I mean, they very much became just symbols. But yeah, it was the it wasn't your main go to. Nope. It was a it was your sidearm, like Jed said, after your 
you know, your pole arm or your lance, if it broke, you'd take your shield and your sword and, and you would have that as a backup or sometimes a mace. Samuel, do you have any weapons right now you could show us? I wish I did. I'm at Is I'm Hannah polishing them right for now. That was <laughs> if if I if I did, I would totally show you. The the basement is is your quite armory. immense. Your armory. Yeah, I, I didn't know it would be uh, on video, so I, I hadn't prepared anything. I, I am not going to lie. I, I toured with the idea of, like, in my white space, just hanging up the swords <laughs> just for tonight and being like, oh, yeah, I've got some stuff. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was thinking, I'm going to put up my, my, my Stormbreaker over here, but I thought, that's a plastic thing, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> I, I can't pull up a picture of, of the armory, if that's all right. I'll just put it on Yeah, my Yeah, no, phone. go for it. Well, by all means. Yeah. One second. In one of those, uh, you know, how do you how do you define success? And at one point, I said, I want to have a fireplace with a mantle, and I want that the red velvet like half circle of just swords hanging up. Holy crap! That looks that's awesome. yours. That's that's my base. Okay, Hannah may have a point. Um, <laughs> so hey, if, Samuel, you guys... can you send that picture to? Uh, to our our uh, yeah, send it to our, our our email that we have, and then sure can. We, can, we can feature that. That looks cool. That right does now. look. Can cool. we send it now? Oh, sure. whenever you. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't Fortress. matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Um, but okay, so I can just find a a league around this area, walk over there, and say, "Hey, I'd like to give this a shot." And yeah, okay. What's totally the community easy. like, guys? Um, interesting. It's very interesting. Why would you say interesting? <laughs> Um, there's, there's a lot of different people. Some people take it very seriously. It's, it's extremely intense. It's all, they, they put hundred percent in the sport. Other people get into it just to enjoy it. And so you, you have different levels of people, but generally everybody's pretty nice and everybody's super like, you know, you go to combat practice, somebody's most likely going to be willing to lend you kit and let you try it. They're not just going to hmm. beat you to the ground. Some people might do that though. You never really know, but we want Good. people to be interested in the sport. So if we have people coming in and we put them in armor, just beat them, beat them up. They're not going to go home thinking yeah, that right. they had fun. So, yeah, it's it's definitely a very open community because we want more people to get involved. Jed, what do you, you look like you wanted to add something to that? And it's always a really interesting group of people because, like, <laughs> you have to be a little crazy to want to do it. Yeah. You also yeah. have to be really functional to be like, able to like train and make it to events and stuff. Mm-hmm. So staying like balance in that way. Well, and I think I mean I can tell all of us have had some level of experience with like theater people, and I think it's probably a lot like theater people. You've got you've got some theater folks that are like super intense in everything they do, and then you got people who are like, hey, this is this can be for everybody if you let it. I think I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah, John, you exactly. remember our days in the theater? I do. Best days ever. Um, do you, uh, uh, Sam, Jed? Where do you guys want this sport to go? Um, it would be nice if it went to the Olympics. Yeah, but we we, all, we have our own Olympics, uh, like Jed mentioned, Battle of the Nations. So I, I was going to say worldwide, but. It, it is gaining popularity. I, I think it would be like, it may, maybe it's a, a long shot, but if it could be known by like everybody, like, oh yeah, that armored combat thing, that's pretty, mm-hmm. yeah, I know a guy who does that. Like that shouldn't be that uncommon. I definitely want it bigger in the US because like overseas, it's pretty massive. Like Ukraine, yeah. the auditions for the Ukraine team were crazy. There was like, 40,000 people trying out or something really? really they're crazy wow good. yeah but uh right now in the u.s it's very teams are very like small and homegrown and it's really kind of like a almost like a grassroots trying to build your team up thing so okay. my goal is if it were bigger and easier to access in the u.s because the more teams there are in the u.s the more fights we'll be able to do mm-hmm. that's nice. more reasonable uh vision i do like that <laughs> well even you know and i'm not saying the ufc is a, a great you know stellar organization but they they got their start as just 
world's toughest man competitions and all it took was the right type of people to get involved and promote it right and it became what it is today i'm not sure if that's quite the you know because then you get money people involved and it becomes more sports entertainment than it does um like a sport uh but i i could certainly see like you know (laughs) like on espn three or something like that where yeah you know definitely you know, eight. Ob- eight. obscure sports quarterly is going to be out there where you've got dodgeball and armored combat, you know, on yeah. the cover. <laughs> um, Stay away from people that come from Iceland, though, man. Don't mess with them. <laughs> Why is that? With ice? They're they're usually somebody that's going in that. They're like the mountain. They're big, huge oh. people. I'd be more worried about those guys from uh, Ukraine and th- those Ukraine? Uh, those. Eastern countries that fight and battle the nations, like Jed said, you got forty thousand people who want to fight. That means forty thousand people. There are some of the best guys ever yeah. in there, and they are insane. Point. They're machines. They're so fast. They don't tire. They hit super hard. I'd, I'd be more worried about going against Ukraine or Russia in a melee than uh, always than... for the Russians. <laughs> yeah, the Russians. So and those I, guys are impressive. They they have a lot of dedication. <clears throat> well, because they get paid to do it. Yeah. Oh, really? Is are, are they sponsored by like uh like uh Jim's Medieval Weapons? Yeah. Are they, do they have like a corporate sponsor, or is it their country that's sponsoring them? Or <sighs> so I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think I think the Russian I. Like I'm saying, I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on this. But I think the Russian one is, like, state-sponsored in some way. Do you guys think it would be beneficial to, like, have Greg's background in hand-to-hand combat and martial arts training or a boxing degree, uh, not degree, a boxing background, anything like that, like a judo background? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, and I think back to that, uh, that what was it called, like a night fight? that was on the history channel. Like I was watching one and, and you know, they started off with the full melee and then they just kept uh, narrowing it down until it was a duel, like a one-on-one. And one of the guys, it, they had all these guys, they've got years of experience in armor combat. And then there was one guy who was, uh, he was a Vegas. I want to say he was a dancer slash reenactor. And mm-hmm. he had been in it for about six months. I'm like, that guy's going to get destroyed by the 40 something guy who's been living and breathing this since he was 19 and just looks like a bear. Um, and he, the, the guy with little experience ended up winning because he's like, well, one, his cardio was off the charts crazy. Cause he, he's like my dancing, you know, I'm putting on three shows a night with crazy Vegas style dances. And he was like in, I want to say it was one of the Cirque shows. So he was doing some like high end stunt kind of stuff. Um, and then the rest was just, he had quick hits, quick hits that he could, and he was precise. He he was just like a marksman with his hits. Um, so yeah, I mean, talking about anybody stepping up and being able to be successful. Here's my last question for you guys. Who's the goat right now in your, in this league? Like, who's the greatest of all time right now? Like, if you were to name drop. Uh, well, Jed, uh, you want me to answer first? Do you got a, somebody that you admire? I might, I might need to think about that one. Uh, there's one guy, and I have some armor made by him. His name is uh, Alexei Petrik. And he's the Poland longsword world champion. And I've seen his fights. Incredible. He's, he's So that's the very, poster you want on your wall. That's the guy. Yeah. And I'm Polish, so it's definitely a little closer to home. Sure. That, that yes, yeah. the Polish longsword champion of the world. It's very cool. So, what yeah. about you, Jed? Uh, I gotta look him up. This is not like my personal hero because I could not possibly do what he could do. Uh, but they just call him the French Ninja. The French <laughs> Ninja. <laughs> okay. Um, and we'll have to look that up. We'll have to look that up. So, who's the first guy? Alexi. Alexi Petrick. Lexi Petrick. All right. And the other guy is the French ninja. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was looking for names like that, guys. That's a cool name. All right. <laughs> <laughs> are the are the are the Irish represented at all in the in the World Games? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I. Yeah, I think so. Pretty like, every, there's a ton of teams from countries you wouldn't even think would be involved. Like, there's a Japanese team and there's like an Israeli team, so it's even like smaller countries. Japanese Japan, it's totally getting pretty see. big there too, and that's I can, cool to I see. can totally see that in Japan. The, and this, the this really, this strikes me as like the rest of the world has caught on. This yeah. is like this being a huge sport. Like, like the U.S. is you know. We're maybe fifteen to twenty years into accepting that soccer is an actual sport. <laughs> no, it's not. And oh and God. now I think this could be like, is this our is this the next soccer where they're like, guys, the whole world has been doing this and America's missing out. We're like, no, it's football and basketball, and then we don't care about anything else That's until true. the Olympics comes on and then we watch gymnastics and act like we know what we're talking about. That's true. All of that's true. So it could be it. This could be the next soccer. I uh, hope it's not the next soccer. I'm, I'm <laughs> doing for the next football. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Guys, I appreciate you coming on uh, and sharing a little bit of your, I don't want to even call this a hobby. This isn't your hobby. This is like, it's like your sport, right? It's yeah. a sport. Lifestyle. Yeah. Passion. Yeah. So, um, uh, I wish you guys nothing but the best. Please stay healthy as best you can. And um, I'll, I'll, I would love to try to give this a shot. Yeah. I know I'm going to get my ass kicked pretty quick, but I want to give it a shot, see what happens. Um, we so we'll set something up yeah. for sure. We'll tape it. We'll, we'll uh, have <laughs> you guys embarrass the shit out of Johnny. Um, <laughs> oh, I, and then I, we'll I, all enjoy some mead after, you know. Oh, I've got a good recommendation for me too. Oh, really? what do you, what do you got? Let's we'll make got? that happen for you. What do you got? What do you, what got? you drink? Uh, there's Vikings blood. I've had a lot of that. John's had that at my house. Camelot, Camelot uh, mead. Those are some. Oh. There's there's this blackberry one. We go to Benny's. Who we stock up. There's oh yeah. Stuff there. Oh yeah. Oh. Jed, any mead? Uh, I mean, there's a guy who who's talking about joining our team who just opened his own meadery, so I might talk to him. Yeah, about that. really? In, like in the area? Uh, he's he's near Madison. Oh, nice. Okay, close enough for me. Very cool. Maybe we'd like to get in touch with him and talk to him on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meat's kind really of an cool. up and coming thing as far as brewing goes. That's yeah, yeah. Very cool. Too. What's that? Look up the name of his company if you want me to. Yeah, yes, hang, please. yeah. Let us send, know just send uh, send that to us. Yeah, when we're done recording here. But um, Jed, where can people find you if they want to like start following your career? Start like, um, Instagram, Facebook, what? Just Jed Zobel on Facebook, Jed Zobel on Instagram. Uh, we also got Milwaukee Iron Stags on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Um, is that that's your team name, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. okay. Getting okay. t-shirts. Oh, hell cool. yeah. You're getting t-shirts? Yeah, we're, we're working on that. If you get us some t-shirts, we'll wear it on the podcast. Just let you know. Anyway, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Samuel, where can people find you? Uh, YouTube channel, Teutonic Penguin. And same same thing on Instagram. And Samuel Pedersen on Facebook. So if you want to check that out. Also, uh, my, my group name, Knights of the North. Knights I'm the active North. on there a lot. So you can get involved through there as well. And, uh, of course, the Iron Stags page. We welcome people to check that out. Very cool. I'll be looking for a T-shirt very shortly. Um, <laughs> Greg, any uh, any last words? No, I, I like I said, when I uh, met Jed, I wish I would have known that he was into this when we were actually on set together because we probably would have gotten in trouble for talking about it too much. But um, <laughs> I think this stuff is really cool. I, I enjoy the Keeping History Live portion of it. Um, the combat science in it is something that's, uh, a lot of people just aren't familiar with, uh, kind of the arms and armor piece of it. And I, I enjoy it. So thank you guys for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank um, you very much. And hopefully we'll be able to, uh, yeah, get together this summer and I can beat up on John a little bit and <laughs> have it, uh, have it all be taped. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks again. Appreciate it. For those of you that are listening and made it this long, thank you once again. For Jed, Samuel, the Greg, this is Johnny. Podcast out. Take care.